Hello and welcome to Just Board, the show about computers, microcontrollers, and more. Today we'll take a look at the Raspberry Pi 3. The Pi 3 is a single board computer running a Broadcom BCM2837, which packs a Cortex A53. This is a 64-bit quad-core ARM processor with a clock speed of 1.21 gigawatts. 1.21 gigawatts! Oops, that was supposed to be 1.2 gigahertz. The GPU is a Broadcom Video Core 4 with a clock speed of 400 megahertz. As far as memory goes, there's one gigabyte of low-power DDR2 SD RAM. There is no onboard storage, so for persistence you'll need to use a micro SD card. You could also plug a flash stick or hard drive into one of the four available USB 2.0 slots. Networking on the board is provided by a 100 megabits per second Ethernet port, as well as the 802.11n Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.0. For media support, there's HDMI output, a 3.5mm combined audio and composite jack, a CSI camera connector, and a DSI display connector, which you can connect a touchscreen to. The board can be powered using the micro USB port on the side. This is the safest and most common way to do so. But if you have a regulated 5 volt power supply, you can also power the board by connecting positive to pin 2 and negative to one of the ground pins. Just be careful with this method because you can definitely damage your Pi if the supply isn't stable. There are a total of 40 pins in the expansion header on the top of the board. 8 of them supply access to ground. 2 of them supply 5 volt power and another two of them supply 3.3 volt power. Two of the pins can be used for EEP-ROM communication, which are typically used by expansion boards. The remaining 28 pins can all be programmed to be general purpose digital I.O., but some of them have alternative special purposes. Two of them can be used as RX and TX for UART. Two of them can be used as SDL and SCL for i square c Five of them can be used for SPI, and finally, four of them can be used for pulse width modulation. The Pi 3 can run several different operating systems, ranging from standard desktop OSs to retro gaming systems to home media centers to... Well, you get the point. And for most of them, it's as easy as flashing an SD card with the OS image you want and plugging it in. This is nice because you can entirely swap the OS just by changing the SD card. So, what's it for? Given its wide availability, reasonable price, and overall ease of use, it's a board that should work in a number of situations. I've used them for everything from playing games with RetroPie, to controlling sound and lights for Halloween decorations, to running local web services. For learning purposes, it functions as an approachable Linux machine, where you don't have to worry too much about breaking things. If you mess up your OS, tinkering with things, you can just reflash the SD card and start over. There are also countless expansion boards known as hats that you can snap right onto the GPIO pins and add things like touchscreens, LED matrices, sensors, you name it. What isn't it for? There are a few areas where the Pi 3 doesn't really belong. For instance, there's a design quirk where the Ethernet port is internally shared with the USB 2 ports, resulting in some pretty poor network performance. No doubt it was done this way to keep the cost and size down, but it can be a real drawback, especially if you're trying to stream data from a USB device. In general, the lack of true gigabit Ethernet and USB 3 makes this board a bad choice for those kinds of I.O. bound applications. The G GPIO pins are great for things that don't require precise timing, but when precision is required, you're going to have some issues with timing and the Linux kernel. But this is what you would generally expect from a single board computer as opposed to a microcontroller. There's also no analog input or output pins, so if you need to interact with analog devices, such as potentiometers or photoresistors, you'll need to add some extra circuitry. Well, that's it for the Raspberry Pi 3. Go to the comments below and let me know what board you'd like to see covered next. And now, a work of art I call, Just Press Play.